Hello and welcome to another quick tip. Uh, in today's quick tip we are going to be looking at expressions of variables inside the disguise. I'm going to jump straight in. So first thing I'm going to show you is uh, arrowing media between different modules. So if I generate a video module and just maybe add some bars and then we generate one of disguise generative modules like uh, excuse me like a scroll module I can press alt on my keyboard drag from my video module into my scroll and now the uh, result of the video module is being passed into the scroll module if I set that to something a little bit more reasonable in terms of the rate um, so everything that um, exists inside of the uh, video module is still applicable. I can change the size or maybe um, change the color. Um, this this all this is all still active, but the results of the video module is getting passed into our scroll module and then uh, rendered out on our projection surface. So that's. That's the first way to, to think about using arrowing in disguise. It's also worth thinking about that uh, arrowing is the default way to um, get uh, external videos into notch blocks. So if I generate a notch block, just um, grab one that I borrowed from Armin and then um, create another video module. If I move my video module below my notch block, right now we won't see anything as the notch block is um, looking for an arrowed video input. So then again, if we go uh, alt on the keyboard, drag from the video to the notch block, then um, our video is being passed into the notch block and when we play we're seeing this iMag effect being applied to the um, to our video. Um, this so that's how we that's our default way for um, getting video data into Notch. We'll we'll just delete this. So we're back to our clean video. We can use this arrowing um, within uh, within a. Um, inside of the module, so I can press Alt on my keyboard and say lock my X scale to my Y scale. So I know this has worked because my Y scale has gone green. And now if I if I change this one, these are being changed in unison. So the value that I have in scale X is being mirrored in scale Y. This is a little bit of a pointless exercise as if I wanted to make this kind of change, I could just use size which is doing those in a uniform way, but it's just a good way to um, show how to link parameters together. Um, we can see that if we right click on our scale Y and look inside the expression, we can see this is the parameter that um, scale Y is being linked to. And if we check on X by right clicking on it, we can see there's actually, it actually just says self inside the expression box. So that basically means just listen to the value that we have here. If I uh, right click on scale Y again and put self back in that box, oh, that's as good as setting it back to default, so there's no link there anymore. Um, if we just zoom out a bit in our visualizer, and then I'm going to um, add already have that in our scene so I'm going to add a second surface to the stage there we go so if I have I'm going to duplicate my video module and then set the mapping so that this is being applied to surface 2 and then just for the sake of keeping things vaguely interesting let's just set a different piece of media for that so um, what we can do is we can use this um, arrowing 
not only within a module or on that timeline, but also within different modules. So in order to get, let's close our media manager, if, in order to get up two video modules at the same time, I've got my first open, I'm going to press control on the keyboard, left click on my second video, and that means that, that gives me the two. And I can press alt on the keyboard, and then grab a parameter and arrow it to our second module. Now again, the green is showing me that these two are linked, and if I, let's just move this out of the way so we can see this value, if I now change this, the, um, the second video and the second brightness value is following the value that we set in our first. And if I was to come back in here and set some uh, keyframes, Um, as we play through our timeline, both sets of videos, because their brightnesses are linked together, are going to follow this keyframe programming. Um, we can uh, use arrowing, so I'm just going to set this guy back to self again, so there's no link anymore, and close that. In fact, let's just dump our programming as well. So select it all and uh, delete keyframes. And just set another one back to zero, go back to one again. Um, so arrowing is also useful when you're using external devices in order to control your scene. I've got a MIDI controller connected to my disguise system here. And if I want to control the brightness parameter on our first video using the first flavor on my controller, I can press Alt on the keyboard and then arrow that to the parameter and we can see that's gone green to show the link and now as I move the fader move that out of the way let's move the fader on my MIDI controller that's now controlling the brightness parameter on my first video and we can set that to be uh, have multiple destinations so if I um, grab my second video again arrow from here to that I can now control them both at the same time um, we can also um, write out, so this, uh, this information here we call it, uh, an expression and um, by creating the link it's filled in the information that we need to know. So we're going to scale this parameter based on a MIDI device and the MIDI device is my nano control, which is my MIDI controller, and control 32 which is, um, guess, the control change that we're sending here. We can fill in our own expressions. So um, I have on my iPhone the most simple of um, OSC apps that I've just um, sort of very quickly put together for this tutorial. I've set this up. Um, I've set up an OSC device in this project. So if I come in here. We can set, uh, we can say OSC, and we want uh, now the the address that this fade is linked to, so, uh, my OSC fade is linked to. So I'm going to say um, d3 dot show control dot fader one. And now, as I move, oh, let's find this for the camera. As I move the fader that I've generated from my OSC device. That's now using that based on the expression that we put in here. So uh, when we're linking OSC devices to um, a parameter, the syntax is, is OSC colon to say we want to listen to an OSC device. And then um, this portion of the expression here is our OSC address. However, in the address where we have um, slashes, we're going to replace those with dots. So the address attached to this fader was d3 slash show control slash fader1 and I've just replaced that with the dots there to um, make that work. If I now um, come over to my transport control, I'm going to create a um, multi transport manager. Okay, cool. 
So right now, um, our multi transport manager, we just have one transport. I can create um, a second one. So I'll call this something original like transport two. And then if we delete our second video, uh, delete. Oh, I've ended up deleting them both. No stress, we just recreate that. Video module, so we're gonna say on track one, we're gonna look after the video being played on surface one, and then we'll generate another track which we will um, use in our multi transport track two. Um, so here we go. Uh, oh, that's a little bit confusing. Let's, let's just even this out a bit. Transport two can play track two and our default transport could play track one. So in track two, I'm gonna generate another video module. Um, we'll play a different piece of media. Just apply that to a second surface. So um, the problem with um, or an issue with arrowing um, media is if we're using um, multi-transport in order to manage our show in that, that way. Unfortunately, there's no way to um, generate uh, like a, an arrowed link between modules on different transports. And this is where variables um, can be quite useful to us. So if I go to my default transport, in the brightness, I'm gonna say, this is, we're gonna give this a variable name, so um, brightness bar equals self. So um, what I've done here is I've said that the, I've generated the variable by giving it a name, and then I've said, listen to the programming that we have here. So right now, that's not really doing anything for us because at the moment, all it's doing is controlling itself, which is exactly how it would work if we didn't um, change the expression here. But now if I go to my second transport, I can say, listen to the variable brightness bar. And now if I go back to my default transport, I can apply any programming I want before, just as if those parameters had been arrowed together. However, this is now sending that data across a multi-transport. So if I just set that back to the start, we can see that the um, timeline programming that I've applied to my first video on transport one, or default transport, is now being listened to by the bright brightness. So if I just restart that, so the uh, um, brightness on our track, track two video module in the second transport is listening to everything that's going on in track one and following it all the way. Um, so hope you learned something useful there. Um, that is uh, a quick rundown on um, a lot of the things that you can do with um, variables and expressions. And um, I hope to see you in our next quick tip. Thank you very much.